Hello, everybody. I'm Slice. Welcome to part four of the ATM Star Guide for all the mods eight. In parts one and two, we covered the outer section of the ATM Star, and in part three, we covered the Withers Compass, the Pulsating Black Hole, the Nexium Emitter, and the Patrick Star. If you missed those, please pause this video and give them a watch to make sure you are caught up and ready to jump in. The links are in the description for each video down below. In this episode, we'll cover the Creative Essence, the Improbable Probability Device, the Philosopher's Fuel, and the Dimensional Seed. Each part of this guide will have chapters down in the description so you can return to specific parts when you need to. First up, and probably the easiest of today's video, is the Creative Essence. This one requires you to have been farming and crafting mystical agriculture essences since the beginning. Uh, if you're this far into mystical agriculture, though, you've already likely crafted this, but just as a refresher and reminder, and maybe in case you haven't, you will need the Master Infusion Crystal, which is crafted with four Supremium Essence, four Prosperity Shard, and a Supremium Gemstone. The Supremium Gemstone is two more Supremium Essence and a Prosperity Gemstone. First main part of the Creative Essence is the Insanium Gem Block. These are nine Insanium Gemstones, and each Gemstone is two Insanium Essence. Okay, so for one block, you need 18 Insanium Essence and nine Prosperity gemstones. The other portion of the creative essence is the insanium block. Those require nine insanium essence. So in total, you will need 216 insanium essence. That is well over 110,000 inferium essence. Just keep that in mind. Okay. In order to craft this, you just combine the four insanium blocks, okay, in the cardinal directions, and then the insanium gemstone blocks in, in the corners with the master infusion crystal in the center, okay? Now, the easiest and probably the least lag-inducing will end up being insanium bees, okay? So notice here I have one insanium bee. This has been running for a little while as I've been building and trying to do some stuff but it's producing insanium honeycombs, okay? You can process these in a centrifuge to get insanium essence. It's a 10% chance. It's not guaranteed. It's not a one-to-one, -one. okay? Only a 10% chance. So keep that in mind. But with enough time, you can get plenty of these. You, you probably won't need to go above five bees, so you won't need more than one hive. One bee one of these spawn eggs takes 40 Insanium Essence. So you have to go through the process of first crafting the Insanium Essence to begin with, which is why you'll end up needing this Master Infusion Crystal no matter what. So it's a must. Okay. In order to craft the Insanium B spawn egg, you'll need four Insanium Blocks and four Insanium Essence inside of the infusion altar. Okay, now this is the lower tier infusion. Keep that in mind, it's not the awakened. Okay, so this does amount to 40. Now you will need one additional block because you need an insanium block in here for the bee to be able to produce. Okay, now in order to make these, you do have to go down the line of crafting a supremium bee spawn egg and Imperium B spawn egg, and so on and so forth. When you get down to the last part, in order to make the Inferium, you need a Prospera B spawn egg. Okay, now these guys come from using a Prosperity honey treat on a regular egg. Now, how you get these treats, uh, notice the, it says type Productive Bees Prosperity 100%. When you have um, prosperity bees, you can smash them in the to get the genes. Okay, one of those specific genes will be prosperity bee. Okay, you need to combine them until you get a one hundred percent, and then you can then start producing all of these in order. Okay, now in order to get a prosperity bee, what you need to have is a crystalline bee, which can be found via a nether quartz or 
uh, nest. And then you take a prosperity block, which is super easy to make. It's just nine prosperity shards. And you, oh, no, don't, don't fly away. Come here. Okay. You then have a prosperity. Okay. You can keep doing that until you get enough of the gene sample to start your, your process. Next up, we have the improbable probability device. Now, some of these pieces we've already discussed on how to craft, such as the solar recharging unit and the nuke and the batteries. Now, one thing to note about these batteries specifically is that it does require you to have these batteries charged. They require 2 billion FE each. Okay, so make sure you start that process because if you're low on energy gain, that's going to take a while to make. If you're a little bit later, probably super simple. First up, we'll have the advanced pocket computer, which is simply uh, seven gold ingots, a connecting glass panel, uh, any glass pane, and a golden apple. Next up, we have a storage component. Now, the, the recipe for this uh, does show that there are three different options. Um, I personally went with the 256M mega storage component um, because I was doing a massive AE2 build. Uh, in hindsight, I should have gone with the fluid storage part, even though it's technically um, RE, uh, refined storage. I believe the fluid storage is far cheaper and a little bit easier on the auto crafting sequence. Okay, so keep in mind the 1048M fluid storage part is probably the cheapest to go with. Okay, this does require a decent amount of auto crafting, but it's not too bad. Okay, so you'll have to bake a lot of stuff and you'll just have to craft a lot of stuff. It's actually fairly easy to auto craft. Just kind of set it and forget it and then let it go. Uh, the 256, I think, is probably a little bit overkill um, on the, re the required systems that you have to put together. Like every single one of these takes like calculation processors and, you know, logic processors. They're expensive. Um, I, I should not have gone that way, but I had done that from the start. So I was just producing as I went. Next up, we have the flight module, which is six gas tiers, uh, a module plus template, an infused inner pearl, and a syringe specifically geared towards gas. Now to get the module plus template that requires four infused inner pearls four infused diamonds, and a module template. Module template is also four dimensional shards and an infused diamond with four iron ingots. And in order to get those infused items, you just combine eight dimensional shards with either a diamond or a pearl to get the infused diamond or infused ender pearl. The dimensional shards are obtained via the dimensional shard or that can be found in the overworld or even in the mining dimension. Um, you can also find them in the nether or even in the end. Now, the syringe is specific to the ghast. Okay, this one happens to say pig because in creative mode, it just gave me pig. But what you'll need to do is take this syringe into the nether, find yourself a ghast, and poke it. Okay. It, it does require gas. Notice that it says level 100 target gas here. Okay, just go after gas. Next up, we have the high density power capacitor, which is six atomic alloys, two diamonds, and an advanced power capacitor. The advanced power capacitor is six electrum ingots, uh, a basic power capacitor, and two diamonds. To get the electrum ingots, you just need to combine gold dust with silver dust and then smelt. 
It's super easy. Uh, I made just enough of this to make myself a mystical agriculture crop. And then I just use the essence from there on out. Okay. Because it only requires eight essence. It was extremely cheap. I kind of just set it and forget it. And I had Electrum all day long. Basic power capacitor requires four redstone iron wiring and a redstone block. The redstone iron wiring requires four redstone dust, a stick, and two iron ingots. The next piece to our ATM star is going to be the philosopher's fuel. The philosopher's fuel, like most others, uh, we've already had some of these items crafted, such as the antimatter pellet and the quad uranium fuel rod. Some of these items will require us to jump into new mods that we haven't covered yet, as well as take a deeper dive into mods that we've just briefly touched on. The first item is going to be the dissolver from the alchemistry mod. That requires four iron ingots, two magma blocks, two pistons, and a redstone dust. All of this requires is power. You can technically also auto feed in and auto pull out if you need to. But you won't really need this too much unless you're planning on doing some other work with it. Your only input is going to be Dragon's Breath. So this does require you to have gone to the end and fought the dragon at least long enough to obtain Dragon's Breath. Uh, the way you do that is you wait for the dragon to throw out its um, purple ball attack. It explodes on the floor. And or if it's hovering over the end portal, it'll kind of do like a, a flamethrower attack that is the, the purple stuff that I'm talking about. It sits on the ground for a little bit of time, so you have very brief moment to capture some dragon's breath. Uh, as you're consuming the dragon's breath, the contaminants on the ground will disappear because it's you're consuming it and putting it into a bottle. With the dragon's breath processed through the dissolver. You will obtain Ignition, uh, Xenon, and Radon. Okay, you, you really only need these, and you obtain eight of them per Dragon's Breath. And you only need one for the Philosopher's Fuel. To obtain the next item, uh, Rejuvenated Flesh, we need to jump into Evil Craft a bit more than we previously did. We'll cover how to obtain blood in a moment, as it plays into another portion of the entire setup. The setup relies on us crafting a blood infuser. To get there, we need to make a dark power gem by throwing a dark gem into a blood pool. That is five non-hardened blood source blocks. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. And then we take that and we toss it in and it crafts us a dark power gem. The other way, thing that you can do with blood buckets is to place them into the ground and let them harden. Okay, what that's going to do is it's going to give you a hardened blood. It will take a little bit of time, so just give it a moment, okay? But once you have that, you can then use it in a furnace to craft some hardened blood shards. Those hardened blood shards are going to be used to craft this blood infusion core. Okay, you need eight of them and a dark power gem. With that core, you can combine it with eight cobblestone to produce yourself a blood infuser. This blood infuser, uh, even though you can't really see it, uh, the UI doesn't show it, uh, it holds 10,000 mil buckets of blood. At least to start that we can augment that in a little bit. One of the first things that's going to be amazing for the blood infuser is that you no longer have to throw dark gems into five uh, source blocks. All you have to do is put blood in here, and then you can turn dark gems into tar dark power gems. First thing we'll want to craft with our dark power gems now is a bowl of empty promises. This bowl of empty promises combined with two crushed dark gems will produce a dusted bowl of promises. This dusted bowl of promises is going to be our base for the next couple of crafts. So I would say craft 
uh, I believe, four of these. Next up, we'll want to combine block of iron with blood to produce a iron promise acceptor. Okay, that iron promise acceptor combined with any tier of bowl of promises along with a spider eye will produce you a promise of tenacity one. Th these promise of tenacities will increase the tank capacity of your blood infuser and allow you to produce new items. Okay, the first item that you'll want to produce with it is again taking a dusted bowl of promises to make a bowl of promise tier one. You'll also craft yourself a gold promise acceptor by combining block of gold with blood. Now these do require 40,000 millibuckets of blood. Okay, so you're going to want to definitely get harvesting some blood. And again, we'll cover that in a moment. Take that gold promise acceptor with a bowl of promise tier one or greater. It can't be tier zero. With an ender pearl, make yourself a promise of tenacity two. And just like the promise of tenacity one, it will further increase your tank allotment in the blood infuser and allow you to craft new items. The first item that you'll want to craft is like the bowl of promise tier two. Additionally, you'll craft a block of diamond into a diamond promise acceptor. What this will do, or what this requires, is 160,000 mill buckets of blood. So you can see that this is going to require a decent amount of blood. You only have to do this once because once you have the tenacity, you're good to go. You take that diamond promise acceptor and a bowl of promises tier two or three, along with an eye of ender to craft yourself a promise of tenacity three. You will need the promise of tenacity three uh, a little bit later. But now let's jump into how to farm for blood. What we'll need for blood farming is some sort of mob to be able to unalive. Um, I chose villagers. Now, the reason I chose villagers is because you can also double this as a werewolf farm. Okay. With villagers, what you can do. Uh, on a tier three book uh, from Ars Nouveau, you can make yourself a lightning spell. Okay, and what that does is it turns them into werewolvians. Werewolvians will turn into werewolves on a full moon. Now, it has to be a full moon because otherwise they won't turn. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't kill these guys for additional blood. You absolutely can. Uh, but what I did on my playthrough was I turned a bunch of these villagers into werewolvians on a full moon, and I just kept doing that. Okay, the reason why I kept doing that is because I was able to get a lot of blood. I was able to get the flesh that I needed from the werewolf, and I was able to produce. Um, some ghosts that we were able to then kill. Okay. To start that process, what you'll want to do is craft yourself a dark tank or a lot of dark tanks, as I'll explain in a moment. But these require two iron ingots and two dark gems. Now, something really neat about these is that you can combine them. So notice that one tank is 16,000 millibuckets. But when you can combine them in a in a three by three, it becomes even greater. Okay. And then you can combine those even further. And you can keep doing that. Okay, they just keep going. Super easy, super cheap. Highly recommend making uh, a large enough tank. Uh, you can also do the same thing with syringes, which we'll get into in a second. You'll need to craft some spikes, which is iron ingots and dark gems. 
you'll need a lot of these if you plan on doing uh, what I was ex explaining with the dark tank. Okay, because what's going to happen is for the blood extractor, you'll need a dark gem, a glass, and three spikes. Okay, so you'll need a lot of these spikes. But you can do the same exact thing. Okay. Initially, they only have 5,000. Not, not a great capacity. So I definitely recommend producing a lot of these. And then with that, you can also do 90,000 and it just keeps going. Okay. It, it, it stacks. Now with the blood extractor and the Stark tank, all you have to do is place it and then you can right click your blood into or out of the dark tank. If you, for some reason, want to put the blood extractor back in, but with blood now in your tank, that's how you can get a bucket of blood to be able to start the entire process with your blood infuser and at least a promise of tenacity one you'll want to craft yourself an empty orb which is just four glass and an iron ingot with that glass orb uh, you can combine that in with some blood in the blood infuser you'll need 10,000 blood and that empty orb to produce yourself a blood orb you'll want at least two of these as they are required to produce this piercing vengeance focus. Now this requires two popped chorus fruits, three, no, four end crystals, a vengeance focus, and two blood orbs. This vengeance focus requires four crushed dark gems and four iron ingots and a vengeance ring. The vengeance ring, you'll want to craft two of these. One to be able to produce that piercer, and then one to be able to wear. With four crushed dark gems and four iron ingots, you can produce yourself a vengeance ring. Now, ultimately, your goal here is to produce a materialized vengeance essence. That's with crafted by using eight crushed, uh, crushed dark gems with a vengeance essence. Now, in my playthrough, uh, I found all of my Vengeance Essence, almost all of my Vengeance Essence, via loot crates. Um, I did very little actual ghost killing to be able to get these. I don't know how hard it is to actually get the Essence from those ghosts, um, but that's what the this is for. Okay, so all you have to do is, when, when you're wearing the ring, and you you see them use this to kill them with that materialized vengeance essence and a promise of tenacity three uh, remember earlier I, I mentioned that we would need this this is why you need it you combine that in the blood infuser with 50,000 millibuckets of blood it's not very much you get a garman hosia which you combine with a werewolf flesh to make yourself the rejuvenated flesh. Next up, we have the Insanium Coal Block. The Insanium Coal Block requires nine Insanium Coal, which is super easy to craft. It's just a piece of coal with two Insanium Essence. And if you set yourself up with Insanium Bees, this is an extremely easy craft. Next up is the Nuclear Reactor. This reactor. Uh, is something that we've sort of covered, but not exactly. These pieces are something that we've covered. So the iridium circuit is something that we've covered. The basic generator is something that we covered. And the nuclear reactor chamber, not quite something we covered, but almost all of the pieces are something that we have covered. The d only difference being reactor plating. Uh, we haven't mentioned this. It takes two lead plates and an advanced alloy to craft and you need um, seven nuclear reactor chambers so you'll need 28 reactor platings next up is the awakening altar uh, this is something that we have covered but i figured i'd refresh your memory slightly uh, as it's pertinent to what we're about to discuss the Awakening Altar takes four soul stone, two gold, and an orange wool. 
You'll need four awakening pedestals, which take two soul stone, two gold, and an orange bowl. And then you'll need four essence vessels, which take two soul stone, two gold, and a piece of glass. Now, just like the other altar, um, when you place this, it will show you where you need to place the items, okay? The vessel cannot be in the cardinal directions. They have to be in the corners for this to work. You can also, just like the other one, place a redstone torch below it so that way you don't have to press a button to activate it. You'll need this for two things. First up is going to be the miniature twilight portal. With that, you'll require air essence, fire essence, earth essence, water essence. You'll also need block of carbonite, block of fiery metal, block of night metal, and a block of steel leaf. If you were in the twilight forest long enough, you will have obtained these very easily. You combine all of that with a Snow Queen trophy to produce your miniature twilight portal. Next up is going to be the Awakened Supremium Furnace. You'll also need the air essence, the fire essence, the water essence, and the earth essence here. You'll want to craft yourself some awakened supremium ingots and awakened supremium gemstones, as you need two of each to be able to produce awakened supremium furnace by converting it a uh, supremium furnace into it. Now, in order to get yourself the awakened blocks or the ingots and the gemstones, You'll need to make yourself some Awakened Supremium Essence. The only way you can get this Essence is via, um, to start anyway, is to craft a Awakened Supremium block. Okay, you do that by awakening it, if you will. You take a Supremium block and you awaken it using Air Essence, Fire Essence, Water Essence, Earth Essence, and four Cognizant Dusts. These cognizant dusts only drop from the wither and the dragon using uh, an essence weapon that's enchanted with a mythical enlightenment. Okay, now that's extremely easy to get on these items. So you're looking for mystical enchantment one. Get yourself a few stacks of cognizant dust. The item that we're going to craft requires us to take a deep dive into elemental craft. Now, in order to get to where we need to go, we have a, a decent setup process. So if you've already set up a lot of this, take a moment to look at the description to find what you're looking for, because I'm essentially going to start from the beginning. First thing you'll, you'll need to do is find inert crystals. Inert crystals are pretty common, I would say. Um, when I first started, they weren't in the mining dimension. They should be in the mining dimension now and a lot easier to get. There's also farms that you can make to get these relatively easy. I ended up doing productive bees. But with inert crystals, you want to combine four gold nuggets with an inert crystal to, con to craft yourself a contained crystal. Uh, first thing that you'll want to craft is an element extractor. Using two contained crystals and three iron ingots, you'll want to craft a handful of these. Okay, Because what these do is they extract element from element nodes that you can find out in the wild. For the time being, at least at the start, you won't be able to move those nodes. So you'll have to craft these and probably just leave them. Uh, with me, I barely had any inert crystals at the start, so I actually had to take my element extractors with me because I had to be very picky on crafting these because I didn't have a whole lot of contained crystal. You'll also need to craft yourself some element pipes. The first set that you'll craft is going to be an impaired element pipe, which is two iron ingots and a contained crystal. A little later on, you'll be able to upgrade those element pipes or the impaired element pipes into element pipes, crafting them with two drenched iron ingots and a contained crystal. You can also craft your old impaired element pipes with two drenched iron ingots into element pipes so that way you don't have any 
waste on pipes. We'll cover how to craft a drenched iron ingot uh, in a little bit. Next up, you'll craft yourself an element infuser, which is a contained crystal, two iron ingots, and two iron nuggets. Now for the containers, uh, small element containers. I would say craft probably four of these. Uh, you don't need a ton of these because you'll be upgrading to the bigger container in the near-ish future. But they require you to have four element pipes and a glass. Now, to find these nodes out in the wild is really, relatively simple, uh, though I recommend finding them at night. The reason for that is because with the shaders on, they give off a slight hue, and they're easy to find. Now, the ones that are a little bit harder to find, at least in my opinion, are the fire ones. If you found yourself a desert, they should be relatively easy. My desert was really far away, and it took me forever to find them. Uh, I believe I had to look in a second desert to even find them. Hopefully, you don't have that problem. To make life easier on yourself, if you are as far as you can be, um, prior to starting element craft, you'll want to craft yourself an entangled block. These, remember, take unobtainium ingots, so they're relatively expensive early on, relatively cheap, pretty late game. Okay, so with those, keep that in mind. You don't necessarily need them, but it makes life easier because what you'll do is you'll find a node, okay, and with your extractor and a container if you plop the extractor down in between the node and the tank oh it has a, a noise now it didn't have that okay you'll start accruing some element now later on um i not i won't necessarily get into this because it's not too important for the actual craft you can tell what stats a node has and then you can choose to move the, the ones that you like. But yeah, this is how you obtain that. So right now, this is, you can see that I have it highlighting this particular one. Okay, and what this is doing is I have a, a pipe that's attached to it that's importing into an element container. The element container is the upgraded tank of the small element. Now, something that I haven't shown you yet is these specifics to the, the pipes. Okay, when you first place the pipes, okay, notice that it doesn't have uh, that little green bar next to it. Okay, If I were to combine this to the side or attach it to the side, notice that it doesn't have that. Okay. You'll want to right click it in order to do that. Okay, you can right click it again to remove it. If you if you're at this stage and you're like, oh crud, I don't have access to it. Just look at the face of the cable that's facing the side that you want and right click it again. Okay. And then you can attach it again. After having found uh, a number of nodes, hopefully you found at least one of each earth, water, fire and air off the start or off the bat the ones that are important to craft are going to be uh or have is the water one so that way you can make drenched iron ingots the fire one so you can make burnt glass and then the earth one so you can make white rock the way you do that is to throw a um come on, element infuser on top of a container now it can also go on top of this element container i just have them on the small ones right now and then you throw uh an item into the element infuser so for white rock you would throw stone in there and it would convert using earth essence or earth element essence into it would convert the stone using earth essence into white rock same with glass into uh combined with fire element to make burnt glass and then iron ingots into drenched iron ingots using water element. You can also then combine inert crystals with any of the elements to make their crystals, their respective crystals. Okay, so you have four different crystals that you can craft using 
inert crystals. You can also, well, eventually, potentially want yourself some air silk using string uh, with earth elements. To craft yourself an element container, you'll need three white rock, two element pipe, burnt glass, drenched two drenched iron ingots, and a contained crystal. I would make a handful of these. These are going to be your one of your main storages for a while. I would say, personally, maybe eight, so that way you have two for each. Uh, I think I went with 12, because I went a little bit overboard on auto-crafting. You'll also want to craft yourself um, a few element binders, at least four, so that way you have one of each element. Okay, Those are crafted using two white rocks, a contained crystal, and two drenched iron ingots. What the element binders do is they allow you to craft pretty niftily, I would say, some items that are going to be needed a lot. Okay, right now uh, I have air and water showing a recipe, whereas I don't have anything showing for fire and earth. And the reason for that is because right off the bat, you don't need anything in large quantities for fire or earth. You will need a lot of springoline shards and a lot of swift alloy ingots. A lot of swift alloy ingots. Okay. The way you do that is these element binders have a specific order that you need to input the items to be able to craft. Okay. So to craft a swift alloy ingot, you first have to input a gold ingot, then a drenched, then a copper, then a redstone dust, and then an air crystal. This container must also have air element inside of it to be able to craft yourself a swift alloy ingot. And then the same process for the springling. But with the springling, you need to use amethyst shard, nether quartz, and then a water crystal. One of the first things that I highly recommend crafting to make your life a little bit easier for auto crafting uh, swift alloy ingots or the springling or really anything at all relating to the elemental craft mod is these ordered sorters. Okay, what these do is the in the order that you click on to the side, it will allow you to input those items in the order that you put them in. So like with these, if you click on the ordered sorter with the gold ingot, then the drenched, then the copper, then the redstone, then the air crystal, it would input into this element binder in that order, and only those one item of each. Okay, it would then start its craft and the ordered sorter would not input until that craft was done and you've pulled out the swift alloy ingot. Now you craft these ordered sorters using five swift alloy ingots, a dispenser, and a hopper. Next up, We'll be crafting a strongly contained crystal, which require four springling shards, four swift alloy nuggets, and a contained crystal. Using the strongly contained crystals, we'll be crafting a gem crystallizer using the strong, strongly contained crystal, three white rock, and four swift alloy ingots. I highly recommend crafting at least four of these because you'll want to make gems of each element the way we craft gems of elements is to throw uh, the element crystal on top here okay so what we can do here is you can throw the inert of uh, the earth crystal or any of the crystal respectively onto the top and then you come to the bottom and you place that now with with this, if you were to let this actually craft, it would probably craft you a crude earth gem. Okay, because right now this has no additional source being put into it. The way you enhance that is to have source in your container that the gem crystallizer is attached to, as well as your shards. Okay, the more shards and element that this can consume the better chance you have at making a pristine earth gem. 
you will need pristine earth gems or you know other pristines such as you know the air gem the water gem and the fire gem to craft some high tier elemental craft items most of the time you'll obtain uh fine gems rather than pristine you can eventually force pristines but most of the time you'll end up with the fine versions next up we have the pure infuser this requires five white rock a strongly contained crystal a swift two swift alloy ingots and an element infuser additionally you'll want to craft a fire pedestal a water pedestal an air pedestal and an earth pedestal okay these are relatively easy to craft you just have to go into input into an element binder these items in order okay so the first item will be an element infuser and depending on which uh, pedestal you're making you'll want to do either the fire the earth the air or the water and then a swift alloy ingot and then two white rocks with the respective element inside of the element container the reason why those are important is because you need when you place down uh, a pure infuser it requires the four pedestals around it now notice that these are not in any particular order it doesn't necessarily care which where the earth one is or where the air one is okay so you can put them in any order that you want they do have to be two blocks away uh, they do have to have elements of that type being pumped into it you can also set this up to auto input or auto drop off you know these these crystals okay so in my world i just have um a hopper pointing into them with some pipes underneath them with additional hidden element containers that are um tied to entangled rather to other nodes okay so once you have all four of those set up with the elements and the crystals you then place a diamond into the pure infuser to get yourself a pure crystal these pure crystals take a lot of elements so you'll want to find yourself a fair amount of nodes by the point by the time you get to this part of the process in order to make life a little bit easier you can craft what is called uh, source displacement plates okay right now i just have the fire one shown but the process uh the recipe is the same you just have to change out which pristine you're using but it takes a pristine gem two swift alloy ingots a pure crystal and three white rocks okay so what what you're going to do find the node that you want place the displacement plate underneath it and then right click it and what's going to happen is it's going to show this little animation this circle right here that you see this dark orange will close in on itself and once it's done it will produce yourself it'll produce rather uh, a source receptacle okay see it just popped out and this is where the stats of the nodes come into play you can craft yourself some glasses that helps you see these um the better the the node the easier you can get uh that element so keep that in mind if you care enough you could also just get a lot of them and disregard the stats entirely but what these do is these allow you to transfer where the nodes are okay so right now i'm basically carrying a fire source so i've just right clicked now if i was not in creative mode the receptacle would have gone away but i just placed that node right there okay now you also notice here that this displacement plate didn't go away but it changed it's now a broken source displacement plate okay you can reuse these okay you reuse them by combining them with any particular pristine that you want okay so in this case i have a pristine water gem and a broken uh, source displacement plate to craft a water source displacement plate okay at first when i did mine i was unaware of that 
So I crafted uh, a bunch of each. <laughs> um, so I ended up with a fair amount of accidental broken source displacement plates that I just never did anything with. Finally, we get to the item that requires elemental craft in the first place. Okay. What we're looking for is a fireite ingot. Okay. A fireite ingot is crafted in a element binder using first another ingot, swift alloy ingot, a springling shard, and a pure crystal. Okay. With some fire element essence. Last up, and probably the longest craft start to finish is the dimensional seat. If you've been following along with this star guide, you will have watched episode or part one of this guide. In part one, uh, I explained about getting obsidian, emerald, diamond, and stone, soul sand, and netherrack. The reason why I explained that so early is because you need a lot of all of those materials. Now, since I've already covered how to obtain all of this material, I'm not going to re-explain how to get those. If you would like to have a reminder, go ahead and check out part one. Uh, it's relatively easy to set up all of these, but it takes a long time to get them so hopefully you've already been started on that. What we're going to cover here, though, is the exit portal, the dimensional storage actuator, the miniature nether portal, and the miniature end portal. First up will be the dimensional actuator. What we're looking for is the Strigger's higher binding ritual to be able to craft yourself a dimensional crystal matrix. Okay, it's going to require uh, an ender pearl and four, sorry, three blocks of quartz, along with a bound gin book. With that matrix and a storage actuator base, which is also done via a ritual, it is actually the Zavosa's spectral compulsion. Uh, that requires three gold ingots, uh, a book of foliate, and an other stone pedestal. An other stone pedestal just requires uh, five other stone slabs and an other stone. Combine uh, so we combine the dimensional crystal matrix with the storage actuator base. We will get ourselves a dimensional storage actuator. Keep in mind that the dimensional C does require two. So when you go to do this produce yourself two of these crystal matrices. Next up, we'll want to craft a handful of teleportation cores. Okay, you'll want at least three of these because each of the miniature portals in this recipe requires its own specific uh, core. And those cores each take a teleportation core. The teleportation core is crafted using four lapis lazuli, two gold ingots, a diamond, and two atomic alloys. Next up, you'll want to craft yourself a handful of unset jewels, which are four swift alloy ingots, four springaline shards, and a diamond. You'll want these unset jewels because you'll, you'll have to craft a jewel for each miniature portal. First up is going to be the, the jewel of the demigod. That requires uh, a pristine earth gem and a pristine air gem. Note the placement of these. Okay, this, this is actually not shapeless. At least it wasn't when I did it. You need the air on the top and the earth on the bottom. With a unset jewel, two pure crystals, and four totems of dime. Now, if you've also been following my guide and or have already done this part, you will know that doing an evoker farm will drop you a lot of totem of dying so this is a relatively cheap process to be able to make these uh jewel of the demigods the most expensive part here i think are the pure crystals and the pristines next up we have the jewel of the piglin 
The Jewel of the Piglin uh, is crafted using a fire crystal, four gold ingots, an unset jewel, two raw pork chops, and either a crude, fine, or pristine fire gem. Next up is the Jewel of the Phoenix. The Jewel of the Phoenix is crafted using a pure crystal, four feather, two blaze rods, an unset jewel, and specifically a pristine fire gem. Okay, for the Ender Portal, you'll have to craft an Ender Infused Teleportation Core using Air Element in a Element Binder. You have to insert the Teleportation Core, the Pure Crystal, an Eye of Pearl, and, sorry, an Ender Pearl Block, the Jewel of the Demigod, another End Pearl Block, and another Pure Crystal. Next up will be the Nether Portal. Uh, you'll need a Nether Infused Teleportation Core, which requires you to input a Teleportation Core, Pure Crystal, a Block of Netherite, the Jewel of the Piglin, another Block of Netherite, and another Pure Crystal inside of uh, of a fire element binder. Last up is going to be the, the the portal that spawns after you kill the dragon, so the draconic portal. You'll need to craft a draconic infused teleportation core by inserting a teleportation core, a pure crystal, a dragon egg, uh, the jewel of the phoenix, another dragon egg, and a, another pure crystal inside of a element binder that has fire element. Okay, so now let's actually craft the portals. The miniature end portal requires you to craft four end stone fire pits, which are relatively cheap. It's just two end stone and two charcoal, or two coal rather, with four eye of ender, and then the ender infused teleportation core. For the miniature nether portal, you'll have four obsidian, a warped nylium, which requires you to have um, either done mystical agriculture or have silk touch and find a warped forest. You also need two nether stars and a wither skull along with the nether infused teleportation core. Last up is the miniature exit portal. This also requires four end stone fire pits, three end crystals, and then a, the Draconic Infused Teleportation Core. Finally, we have the actual crafting of the Dimensional Seed. Something to note about the Dimensional Seed is that it does require the Nether Portal facing north. And what that means is it means the miniature Nether Portal needs to be facing uh, on, on the north side of this entire setup. Okay, so if we look at where I'm at, notice that I am facing north. That's where you need the nether portal, okay? So what we have here is all of our blocks are down with the portals on top of their respective blocks. And last but not least, we have to place uh, some soul fire and solium seeds. Now the solium seed, requires you to have solium dust and a prosperity seed base. These are relatively cheap. You should be able to easily craft those. But what you're going to want to do is set the soul sand block on fire and then toss in the seed base. And after a short animation, it will produce the dimensional seed. It will also return to you the dimensional storage actuators. So you don't have to recraft the dimensional storage actuators to make additional dimensional seeds. That wraps up part four and concludes the ATM star guide. If this helped you in the journey of the, for the ATM star, please consider giving this video a like and sharing with your friends. If you'd like something clarified, join the discord and I'll do my best to help you out. Drop a comment to let me know what you think and as always, thanks for chilling.